Dr. Brad Wenstrup, welcome again to the Bill Cunningham Show. And Congressman, how are you? I'm hanging in there, Bill. How are you? Doing well. Uh, let's talk, uh, first of all, about what the Democrats have done. The arms were twisted. The CBO came back with the idea it's going to cost uh, hundreds of billions of dollars toward the deficit. Six or seven moderate Democrats, your cohorts in the House, said they weren't going to vote for it until they got the CBO score. It had to be paid for. CBO comes up and says it isn't paid for, but that's okay. We're going forward anyway. I think the final vote was like 220 to 212, something like that. It passed by about three or four votes. Can you give us some idea what's in it? Because much like Nancy Pelosi says, you have to really, you have to pass it to find out what's in it. Do we know what's in it at this point, despite media attempts to keep that quiet? <laughs> Well, nobody really knew what was in it to begin with. They changed it right before the vote one more time, but certainly no one had time to really review the entire thing uh, at that point, but they brought it to the floor anyway. I mean, it's such an abuse of power that we're seeing out of the Pelosi um, and, uh, administration, if you will, yeah. the Pelosi administration in the House of Representatives. Nowhere in the 2,000 pages and trillions of dollars spending are measures for more efficiency, better results, genuine accountability, putting putting America first. I mean, none of that stuff is, is, is really there. I mean, this is uh, unbelievable. It's uh, Washington's reached such a high level of federal spending uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's the highest since World War II. I think we're spending more than we did in, in World War II. And, and, and at that case, we were doing something that's going to keep us a free nation. And now it's just, you know, having us going broke. But, you know, and in a couple of weeks, they'll have the audacity to ask Congress to raise the debt limit to borrow more right. for, for, the, for this spending. But you, you asked... You asked what's in it, and, you know, I can put together a few things right now that we know it's going to do, and then there's some things that, that we, we should be doing that aren't in the bill. Um, but, it, you know, this, this raises prices on all the products made and manufactured in the United States. And this is devastating because this is at a time when we should be bringing manufacturing and businesses back to the United States the, it, the tax cuts and jobs did, did that. We did not have any inversions. No one was leaving the country. This is going to do just the opposite. It's going to make it tougher on small businesses. Jobs will be going overseas. Our supply chain, which we need to have domestic, will become more and more reliant on full, foreign entities. Then you've got amnesty for millions of illegals. I mean, you oh. you, you break you break the law, and we and here's the and we get a check basically. Break the law, get a check makes no sense. It's not fair to Americans that, that live and play by the rules each and every day, and it's not good for our safety. But it also, and, and this is one I think everyone's going to love, 87,000 new IRS agents to, to look at your accounts almost every day. And this, these audits that are in this bill, that any, anybody who earns 75000 or less, they're going to make up about half of the audits, and another quarter of the audits or so, it will be if you earn about 25000 a year. I don't know anyone who said, oh, I got audited by the IRS. Really was fun. Really worked out great. Well, so so yeah. I understood from some of the reporting, there wasn't any reporting on 87,000 IRS agents. That was going to be out of the bill. It's in the bill. So you're saying that uh, if you make under $70,000 a year, which is the great bar, I think the average American makes like $65,000, uh, these these thousands, tens of thousands of IRS agents, they need something to do. They just can't report to work in these brand new buildings and all the computers and all the digital and all the fringe benefits they're going to get. They can't sit there and do nothing. They got to go after somebody to justify their job, correct? Uh, that's pretty much how it's always worked, right? I mean, you're there just to try and drum up more money, and you find something somebody didn't cross a T or dot their I and listen. There's there's a lot of law-abiding good Americans that are going to be audited and have to go through the hassle, maybe hire people to help them through it. I mean, this this is just uh, uncalled for, you know. And again, it's just one more thing the government does, usually in some kind of punitive measure. Uh, even the people that maybe even made an innocent mistake or no mistake whatsoever, they're just always going to be trying to find something. The other thing that we found in this bill is, is it's going to, it's, is there's a tax to heat your home. Okay. Winter's coming. Boy, isn't that great. And we're doing this at a time when we cut down domestic energy production and started relying on the people that we were trying to get away from from decades, which is OPEC and the Middle East and, and foreign uh, energy sources when before this all happened, we were exporting. Joe Biden changed all that. We were exporting energy, and now we're now we're importing it, and it's going to cost us more. When there's a tax on it to boot, 
Uh, what else can I think of? Child tax credit without any work requirement. I mean, this is people are in direct work employers and small business owners are in direct competition with the federal government's unlimited printing press and just giving money away. And where else can I go? A Hyde Amendment. Hyde Amendment, which has been so traditional in both for both Republicans and and Democrats, it said no federal taxpayer payer money for abortions. That is taken out. They have really gone that far. Even some of the people that said they would never do that, like I think Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Uh, yeah. And and lastly, they went, went if we. If they didn't learn the lesson in Virginia, it's unbelievable, but they're still wanting to dictate our children's educational standards. And, you know, we saw Terry McCall in Virginia lose for governor because he said should, the parents shouldn't have a say in what their kids learn. This is just where they are. Everything needs to be nationalized. Everything needs to be under their control. They get to decide. And really what they're doing, too, with education is making it indoctrination, indoctrination to their way of thinking and their way of controlling people and power. And as we've seen, too, things like critical race theory, they're just there to divide the United States of America, which, by the way, our adversaries around the world love seeing us fight sure. for this type of stuff, when when really we have been one nation um, and we believe that that, you know, all are created equal, and we were striving towards improving those relationships in our country since since our beginning, really. And we have come a long way with that, and they're just ripping scabs off of things that don't need to happen. What about providing lots of government benefits to those who are not U.S. citizens? In other words, do you have to be a U.S. citizen to get all these free money people are receiving? Can you be from some other country, show up, you got three kids, and suddenly you get thousands of dollars every month? Yeah, and that's something that, uh, you know, we're seeing coming through the DOJ. Uh, you're, you're an attorney, Bill. I'm, I'm not sure how they do that, but I think they, they, they probably do something like, uh, you've come in and the deal was maybe you were separated because that was the law. And when you came across illegally, uh, but it really isn't taking place now, but you do a class action lawsuit and the Department of Justice just settles it and they determine the payment. So I think that's one of the ways that they are going to attempt to try and just get money to people that have come across the border illegally. But besides that, it's all these other benefits. And and it's just there, you know, they want to you know, say you come across, you're going to get health care, you get whatever. Well, what about the hardworking Americans that have been out there for years, putting money away, doing the best that they can, paying for their education, all of these things? I just don't understand it. And I don't know what they believe is the benefit besides them having some personal control over people's lives and then having power that comes along with it. Do you have hope? Do you have any hope that the two so-called moderate to liberal U.S. senators uh, are not going to get cinema and mansion? Do you, uh, I thought the other day uh, if they had a deal with mansion and cinema, it would have been announced. In other words, as soon as you get those two on board for anything, you quickly put it on the dock of the U.S. Senate, you pass it because you can't wait any longer. Am I right to say if they had a deal, we know about it by now? Um, I don't know about that because it's probably best for them to to lay low a little bit. I mean, they've been certainly speaking out. I mean, Joe Manchin has made many, many comments, you know, such as uh, this is not a center-left or left country. We're a center, if anything, little center-right country. Uh, so I hope he, he sticks to what he believes that, that, that it should be. But at the same time, these things have to come from the House and go over to the Senate. And so I think that there are some senators, besides just Manchin and Cinema, that look at this and go, I don't know if I can go for this. I think there will be a pretty good chance that I'm not going to get reelected because right. America is figuring this thing out. I mean, look what's in there, it, you, the salt deductions, which Explain most people that. know what that Explain is. Explain that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, state and local taxes. So, you know, what was able to be done over the years, you could deduct uh, any state and local taxes you paid from your federal income tax. Well, you know, if you're in a state where the state and local taxes are pretty high, you really bring down your federal taxes. Meanwhile, people in other states where the, where the taxes are low, they're like, well, why don't I get that kind of a break? You know, I could have the same level of income or what, what not. So um, that was unfair, and we changed that in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act.
and and it, and it was fair. And but now they want to extend those deductions and give wealthy Americans up to an eighty thousand dollar tax break each year. I actually had a CEO of a company call me when we were doing the tax cuts and jobs act, and he was complaining that the the, the salt deduction was going to be peeled back or right. or taken away. And he said, "Oh, oh, oh, bread! This is going to kill those of us with three and four homes." And no. I said, that's a message I can deliver to <laughs> deliver to that to the working schleps. Somebody's concerned yeah. about their fourth home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" I said, "You know, understand? We're we're trying to level the playing field, and you know, states have to take some responsibility for what their tax rates are." Look, I think it's wonderful that we have fifty states where we have to compete, right? And, and I think it it makes us all better when we have competing states. People can decide where they want to live. You're seeing a lot of people leaving California because right. of how mismanaged it is. But what, but what they're trying to do here is turn the whole country into California. We can't have that. It's just, it's not sustainable. But um, Congressman, you know, what if they're successful in paying people not to work? Because right now there's 10 to 12 million jobs that go unfilled because it's more advantageous for individuals not to work than to work. But this is uh, socialism on steroids, welfare on steroids, welfare plus. And, and you can make 50, 60,000 bucks a year and don't work, which is like making $75,000 and paying taxes. What if they're successful in this? Let's talk about the road not taken. What if they're successful? What happens to America the next two to five years? Well, we're already seeing what 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 can happen, and this will just exacerbate it. You start you you see the inflation that's taking place, which is a tax on every single American. Every time you go out and and you see that your energy costs are higher, that your groceries are higher, uh, you, and you and you also tend to see because they want to defund police that the you know, crime is is increased. That's the America that we're in today. But you know, when you have people getting money. And not working, or just getting such such benefits, and and then we we have things sitting in our ports, our supply coming from overseas. Our ports are backed up, not with what we're trying to ship out, but yeah. what's trying to come in. And so everything is sitting there. Our our shelves are are getting empty, uh, but people still have some money in their hand because we're just printing money or borrowing money and and cranking it out to Americans. Well, it doesn't do much good when the supply runs out. And and when the supply is diminished, uh, then the cost goes up. And then that's just supply and demand. And then, therefore, we've got more and more inflation, making more and more people uh, trending down towards poverty or to l lower net income. Yeah. And you, you, just, you just see it coming. And, it's, and this is not the America that we know. And I'm afraid people are going to see it firsthand. And I have no idea why this administration... And therefore, that many people in uh, the Democrat Party that want to do this. And keep in mind, the bill that passed the House, all every Republican voted against it. Right. One Democrat voted against it. So it was bipartisan. Yeah, in a sense. Bipartisan and, against yeah. it. Well, I pray to God, if there's a God in heaven, we got to keep the home of the free and the land of the brave. We can't, just can't hand over the socialism, what's happening on the streets, what happened to what happened in, in Waukesha, Wisconsin. There's chaos everywhere. Yeah. We need some peace and some quiet. And I pray to God over the next, I don't know, several weeks, the Senate says, this is a bridge too far. We can't do it. Uh, I heard the number on one of the morning talk shows that a little over $6 trillion has already been flooded in the market. $6 trillion, And this number was coined at $1.75, maybe $2 trillion. Uh, I, I watched this morning one of the economists who worked for Obama said it's really closer to $5 trillion of additional yep. money to be spent. Now, what number is accurate? Do we know? Well, you, you know, you, we don't really know because we, I don't think that things really been fully explored because the CBO, I believe, was just giving us an estimate, not an actual cost. And they're not always right. But keep in mind these programs that are in there that have a cost. The way they brought the cost down when you were hearing that it was, you know, 3.5 trillion, 4.3 trillion. If something, if a program was supposed to be in for five years, they cut it down to one or two. Reagan warned us long ago, and it's still very true. He's the, 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 per, the closest thing to eternal life is a government program. And that's exactly what will happen because 
politicians then in a few years will say we can't out that, you know, well, we that program because you know you want to kill children you know and that's obviously not true what we want is americans to be free we want americans to be independent we want americans to thrive we want americans to succeed and not have to rely on government programs you know i think a pro program like medicaid to be able to provide health care for those in extreme poverty that's great but our goal should be to have fewer people need it not brag about putting more into it and yeah. that's the problem you know compassion is not putting a, a a card into a box and pushing a button for a vote that then tells somebody else what they have to do and someone else has to pay for it that's not compassion yep. and so we're really harming more people than we're helping thank you very much congressman brad Winston, one of the leaders of the house we'll see how this develops the next few weeks and uh, once again thank you for coming on the bill cunningham show let's say a prayer for those who have survived this suv driving through a christmas yes, parade in waukesha wisconsin but uh, once again yes, uh, congressman thank you very much all right thanks bill god bless you